dice. Most of us use them very often, and even if you don't so daily, you've encountered them at least once in your life. But have you ever wondered where do they come from in the first place? How did they evolve and why today when we talk about dice we don't necessarily have to mean the classic cubic shape? We will tell you all about it in today's material, so sit back, relax and have fun. The Greek playwright Sophocles believed that dice were invented by Palamedes during the siege of Troy in 13th century BCE and later offered to the goddess of luck and blind fate, Tyche. This tale lived on in ancient Greek culture and was immortalized, for example, on decorative vases, where even Ajax played dice with Achilles. Unfortunately, Sophocles couldn't have known that just as Tyche couldn't save Palamedes from death, the origins of dice must be sought much, much earlier in places the Greek never dreamt of. While there is no doubt about this, it is extremely difficult to pinpoint the specific place and date that would be the first in the race to invent dice. And that's why today it is assumed that they were independently invented in various places around the globe. That being said, we should certainly mention discoveries in the ancient city of Daskilion in Turkey, where a terracotta board game and dice-like elements dating back to 3000 BCE were discovered. Around the same time, dice were used not only 2500 miles to the north in the vicinity of the village of Scarabre in the Scottish Orkney Islands, but also over 1200 miles to the south in the ancient city of Ur, located in the present-day Iraq. The dice known as the oldest dating back to 2700 BCE and utilized in the royal game of Ur originated from there. As you've already noticed, indeed our journey through time and space could extend much farther, uncovering countless treasures of the past. For instance, we might find ourselves in the far-off city of Larkana in Pakistan, where dice from around 2000 BCE have been found. And what's super interesting among these ancient artifacts was the earliest known example of dice where two opposite sides total seven, a design still standard in the dice we use today. And this is an important distinction because at early stage referring to dice in today's understanding is quite a strong simplification simply because they didn't resemble them in any way. And this distinction is crucial because at the early stage, referring to dice as we understand them today significantly oversimplifies their nature. At first, they didn't look much like dice we know. They were more likely early versions and were often made from real bones, teeth, sticks or dried fruits. Over time, more standardized forms emerged, with the earliest shapes closely resembling today's D4s, crafted from materials like stone, terracotta or animal bones. But we will come back to that shortly, and now that we've settled the issue of the origin of dice, at least as far as our current knowledge goes, the question remains, what were they used for at all? While from today's perspective we would say mainly for entertainment, games and RPGs, or perhaps gambling, but was it always like that? And the answer to this question could be summed up in one sentence. Yes, dice has always been used for entertainment and gambling, although the specific ways they were used have changed over the centuries, and we will discuss that further. However, it is important to remember a use of dice that today is mostly overlooked, but was actually where it all started for many cultures. In the beginning, dice were often used to understand what the gods wanted to predict the future and to give the advice on what to do. Basically, dice were used for fortune telling. And what's interesting, this specific use of dice has its own name, astragalomancy. It comes from the Greek astragalos, which literally means the ankle bone of mammals, especially hoofed animals. So exactly as I said, many of them didn't quite resemble what we associate with the term dice today. These small bones are characterized by a repetitive and fairly uniform shape that allows specific values to be assigned, just like in case of their modern counterparts. For example, in ancient Greece, depending on where the bone fell, it could give a result of 1, 3, 4 or 6, with opposite ends summing up to 7, just like today. Hence such a selection of values and not 1, 2, 3 and 4. So essentially we are talking ancient d4 here, which unlike ours provided different probabilities for rolling each value on the dice. Back then someone attempting to connect with the esoteric world would roll them and the results would be interpreted from so-called dice oracles, such as tall stone pillars around which grooves were made for dice. The interpretation varied depending on the outcome. Each outcome was associated with a different divination, for example a series of five ones was highly desirable being a divine number as the chance of rolling it was absolutely minimal. 
Getting five ones clearly indicated that the success awaited you in life. And such examples could be multiplied by traveling through time and space to various corners of the earth. Starting from ancient Egypt, where divine guidance was sought using dice shaped like today's D20s, which were inscribed with symbols of various deities in the 5th century BCE. Through early Buddhist four-sided divinatory dice, the results of which were interpreted in special manuscripts. One of few aspects of divination involving dice, but still present on fairly large scale today, is Chinese oracle bone divination from the Book of Changes. This is a contemporary variation of the ritual of divination known since the Sung dynasty, which brings us back to the 12th century CE. Just throw the dice and read the pattern they form, known as hexagram. Even now there are many different ways this is done. And it's very popular all over the world, especially among Chinese communities. But like we mentioned earlier, today we mostly use dice for playing games, having fun and gambling. And this has always been true, both now and long time ago, where games and gambling often went hand in hand. This connection has been around for centuries and there are too many examples to talk about all of them. But we can quickly touch on this topic. For instance, take the old dice found in Scarabre area, which look a lot like dice we use now and were probably used for entertainment back then as well. Some of you might have heard of or played Senet, an ancient Egyptian game that's over 5000 years old. And although initially it was played with sticks serving as dice, today it is recognized as one of the first examples of using randomizing elements in a board game. Moreover, dice replaced sticks over the following centuries and today they are used in the vast majority of cases. And of course there is still not much younger the royal game of Ur, this time utilizing d4 dice which strikingly resemble those we use today. Later on, dice began to appear in the context of gaming without any additional elements. One of the most famous and oldest games based solely on dice is Passage, a game based on rolling 3d6s and managing risk where basically rolling below 10 in successive rolls could result in a loss of money. It is said that after the crucifixion of Christ, soldiers played Passage to determine who would get his robes. Concerning ancient Rome, we can actually stop there because dice games and associated gambling flourished practically throughout the entire period of the empire's existence. The Romans distinguished two types of dice, those with values from 1 to 4 called tali and those with values from 1 to 6, tessare. And with their use, they created an incredible variety of games, ranging from skill-based games requiring reflexes to those resembling today's dice poker. And as you've probably already noticed, the development of dice games progressed in many places on different continents throughout the centuries. The presence of dice was indeed overwhelming, and I guess it's fair to say that the affection and excitement people felt for dice rolling intensified through the ages. Europeans especially developed a fondness for them. We are aware of significant number of medieval dice games, and yet there likely remain numerous smaller regional games that still need to be uncovered. It is worth mentioning, for example, the game Azar, which means gambling, originating from the Arab world, which used only two six-sided dice and gained immense popularity among the medieval European population, who loved to gamble with money despite its complicated rules. And what's more, in 19th century, this game served as the basis for an easier version still played in casinos today, the dice game called Craps. Or another 15th century game, this time German, called Glückshaus, known as Lucky 7. Today it is considered one of the first games involving bets and one of the precursors of casino games in modern sense. And it is also important to mention that dice games flourish not only on the old continent, but also in the Far East. In 12th century China, the game Tianzhou gained immense popularity in which players alternately use six-sided dice or dominoes. It is a game of risk management and achieving various combinations, which some people still play today. Over the centuries, dice have let people around the world enjoy themselves, make friends, hope and compete, no matter who and where they are. They've created a feeling of togetherness and break from everyday life. 
This practice has lasted for many many years and is still going strong today. You can be sure that many of the games you can play at home today were also known to our ancestors, sometime even very distant ones. And this applies regardless of whether we are talking about 19th century inhabitants of the American West, British sailors traversing the oceans 200 years ago or Vietnamese landlords. They could all practically play the same game, such as Chuck a Luck, which has identical counterparts in all these places and it's still played today. The rich and layered history of dice spanning their origins and social influence over centuries is so vast and compelling that it could be subject of multiple movies like this. Sociologists and mathematicians have studied them for ages and the field of game theory and probability heavily depend on insights gained from these small geometric figures. Today we know dozens of types of dice, not only those used for thousands of years like d4s, d6s, d8s or d20s, but also newer ones like d10s, which were basically unknown back then and were patented and popularized in the 20th century. Today we even have dice with odd numbers of sites and other oddities used for all kind of board games, dice games and RPGs. We hope that although this material treats the subject quite generally, from now on you will know that a 20-sided dice have not been with us since the second half of the 20th century when Dungeons and Dragons was created but dates back to ancient Egypt and that the results summing up to seven on opposite sides of the dice are not a modern invention of dice producing companies. So the next time you pick up your favorite set, think of it not only as a tool to play an exciting session, but also as an object with a history spanning thousands of years whose influence on the society, regardless of where you come from, has been invaluable. And of course, let us know if you'd like to hear more on this topic and if you would like more materials like this on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and follow our social media. Meanwhile, I bid you farewell and until next time. Bye bye.